Hi everybody, Richard again here from Electric Classic Cars and on this week's episode sponsored by Mauser Electronics and Phoenix Contact we are back at Santa Pod people but the big news is we have got full power mode engaged so without further ado the sun's coming out we're ready to rock let's go Now, the last time we were here, first of all, it was freezing, wasn't it? It was about 10, ten, ten degrees. 10 degrees. Proper chilly. Even though it was like early June, I think, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, June. It's insane. Uh, now we're here, like end of June, and it's sun's out, and it's t-shirt weather, even though I've not got a t-shirt on. So it's a lot warmer, uh, so the track should be better traction, if you like, and the batteries will be warmer, so that means they can give more amps. Um, it's got racing stripes on, which obviously is going to make the whole car faster, isn't it? It's got to be good for a second quicker, isn't it? Exactly. Talking about times, when we were here last time at, what is it, 65% power, it was, um, quarter mile was 11 seconds dead. So the aim of the game today, uh, bear in mind this isn't a drag car, but the aim of the game today on full power is to at least get into the 10s and, you know, keep on testing, testing until it's time to go home and just make sure nothing breaks. And then, as a byproduct, see what times we get. Now, on the last episode we did when we were at Santa Pod, we were, uh, this is the first time we took the car out. So I backed the power down to about 65% power and nothing broke, everything held together. So today we're back to go full power. So I'll show you how I do that actually. It's quite interesting. So I'll show you how simple it is. All you do is you go into settings on the dashboard you got max power here of 355 kilowatts. I'm going to go drag it all the way to the right. 550 kilowatts now. Right settings. And back. We are good to go at full power, people. Now, if you haven't seen the last episode when we came to Santa Pod, click on the link above. Because we were doing 11.0 quarter miles. That's 11.0 seconds to do a quarter of a mile all day long at 65% it was just 11.0 11.0 11.0 so today with full power I think it's going to be all about traction so if we can get traction off the line hopefully we'll be way into the tens but there's only one way to find out so I'll see you on track so by the time we finish today one thing's for sure we're going to need to charge this thing up and most of the charge sockets we use are off a company called Phoenix Contact, which is one of our sponsors. So, back to the lab to have a chat about them. Now, Phoenix Contact supplies with something which is pretty essential for all electric vehicles. Without it, you're not gonna go very far, and that is a charge socket. They have a fantastic range of charge sockets that we use called Char-X. Everything from the Type 1 CCS charge sockets for the US market, to the Type 2 ones for European, even down to just the AC, only ones without the rapid charging side of things. So let's get into some of the key features as to why we choose these charge sockets. Now we've got a CCS charge socket here and CCS stands for combined charging system because it combines the AC charging and that rapid DC charging as well. It has a lock mechanism on the side and now that lock throws out a pin when there's a charge cable that goes in and it locks it in place to prevent it from unexpectedly getting removed, let's say. But it also has some additional wires in here, which are sensor wires to sense whether or not that pin has been successfully engaged or disengaged. And that information goes off to the safety systems within the vehicle itself. It's also got a, a drain plug underneath because obviously water and electricity never mix well. So if any liquid does get in here, it can drain out of the bottom. If we turn it around here, you can see the cables coming out the back here, but there's also some additional wires here, and these are the temperature sensor wires, because this socket here can cope with up to 250 amps continuous, so it needs to be able to measure or monitor its temperature as well, and that again goes to the safety systems within the vehicle itself. Now it's fair to say we've used a lot of different makes and models of charge sockets over the years, but due to the high quality and the comprehensive features, for some time now we've standardised on the Phoenix Contact Char-X range available from Mauser Electronics. And we'll put a link in the description as to where you can find these products. And on that note, 
back to the racing. Right. After that, did you that get that? How was that then? Was it quicker? Um, yeah. So that's the first run of the day. We just broke for lunch now because we arrived late. But this goes on till 8pm. So um, we've got a 10.6. So that's the first run today already quicker than the last time we was here, which is, you know, no surprise. But the main thing i got to say is I definitely feel the additional power because at the start we wheel spin like heck and my 60 foot, which is the first 60 foot of the track, is actually slower than last time. So if we can get rid of that wheel spin, then we've definitely got a low tens in this car. Um, it's just how we're going to do it. So I'm going to do big burnouts, I think, play around with traction control this afternoon and see if we can get it into the low tens. So second run of the day, uh, I'm just going to make a few changes to the first run, uh, mainly just around traction control. So previously I had traction control sensitivity set to about 2, I'm going to set it up to 5 now to be a little bit more sensitive and hopefully catch that wheel spin as it happens and if it makes it worse then we'll go the other way and we'll switch traction control off. So, but let's go this way first and see what happens. So, big burnout at the front, big burnout on the rear tyres, put it back into four wheel drive, put traction control on, set logging gong, and then go. A lot to do before I get to the start line, and then I've got to go and concentrate on racing. <laughs> Out there, and put it in rear wheel drive mode. Right settings. Okay, forward, off we go. into pre-stage which is the first set of lights and into stage ready uh, yellow green I think that's enough playing for today. We've had, I don't know what time it is. What time is it now? Half past six. Half past six. So we've been here since uh, half ten this morning. That's enough, I think, for one day. Yeah. You bored yet? I am. Time to go home. <laughs> I could have done it all day. But no, we've got to go. The car has been super strong all day. I think the summary of the results are I'm limited by traction. Certainly got full power just not enough traction really. Do you want the times? Final times? Oh yeah, go on in. There what you go. Got? Scores uh, on the doors. Right, so what have we got? So we started the day with a 10.62 this morning and then I started messing around with traction control, got a 10.53, 10.7, 11? Oh, that's when I had traction control off. Yep. Yep. And then a 10.60, 10.50, all right, so Basically 10.5 or 10.6 is what I got today on the quarter mile. Uh, Nought to 60s were two point something, I think. But the main thing for people that are into drag racing, the 60 foot was awful. That is your first 60 foot. And that's where I was just wheel spinning all over the place because on full power, this had far too much power to be able to get off the uh, line really quickly. And the 60 foot times were 
anything from 1.7 to 1.9. Bear in mind my Silver Beetle gets off the line in 1.3 60 foot because it's got much wider tyres, softer suspension on the rear and it just hooks up really nicely but then it runs out of power because it's not four-wheel drive. So there you go, 10.5, 10.6, I'm happy with that. Would be lovely to get it lower and into the nines, but I think this power-wise is really capable of doing that. But as far as setup is concerned, this is a really a circuit racer, hard suspension on the back, low profile tires, etc. But as far as, you know, the day is concerned, it's all about testing bug zapper, making sure that battery pack and the power systems can cope with full power. And that is a massive tick today, that's for sure. So I think it's the time to put it back on the trailer, get back to the workshop, have a look at those logs. And it just leaves me to thank our sponsors, Mauser Electronics. So go to mauser.com for all your electronics needs and Phoenix Contact for sponsoring this episode. And we'll see you on the next one, boys and girls.